the, you know, the, to figure out what was going on with him. Uh, well, they slowed things down. They didn't do surgery yet. They slowed things down. And they did a full body scan today with a uh, infectious doctor. He went to see today, and she says that uh, after reviewing the full body scan, that things are dormant now, and then his vocal cord that was paralyzed is starting to come back. And she thinks it'll come back pretty well in the next six months to a year. And they thought maybe he's going to have trouble with that the rest of his life. And that's in one week. And after this is in one week. After God, God has taken hold. And uh, they were looking at with his body scan to see if his uh, liver was inflamed and his spleen, and they were not inflamed. Crazy. And then you know on on Sunday before Mark left, he uh, Drake and my daughter Mandy went to see him, and he anointed Drake, and uh, I think that's part of it with the prayer warriors praying for him as helped to help him through all this and the doctor said that uh, he had tremendous healing powers well I think that's through God the Almighty hallelujah and your yeah. prayer everybody praying for him and dr. Carr you too and we really praise God and we really appreciate praise God hey Ted I'll put your pretty little wife on will you please I'm sorry, I didn't mean to butt in. No, um, hey, Sister Rowe, you all are, you're a team, you're a team. But here's what we're gonna well, do. Let's we just cannot thank you guys enough uh, for the prayers and the prayer warriors. We truly believe this is, this is God's healing and we honestly believe that this would not have happened if God had not intervened because a week ago they were talking about open heart surgery. Uh, they were talking about lymphoma. And now he shows no sign of any of that. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And here's what I want you to do. Um, wherever all of our students are, let's agree with Ted and Sister Rowe that God is going to do a miracle that this man won't wait, have to wait for six months for this or that. God's going to do it. And we, we don't take any credit. We give it all to the Lord God Almighty. So take Ted's hand, sister, and... Uh, I'm I'm imagining I'm holding your hand and Jackie's holding your hand and we all ha are are laying hands on Drake by proxy, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come into our agreement. We bless you and praise you and worship you and honor you. You are God. There is nothing impossible for you. And so, Lord, in 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 agreement, Lord, we we're asking you to uh, touch Drake again. And, and, and give him that total healing, God. You're the miracle-working God. And let the doctors know that it was you, God, who performed this miracle. And we give you the praise. We touch and agree as uh, members of the body of Christ, as family. We come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we touch and agree that you're going to do this. You said, whatsoever things we desire when we pray, believe that we receive them, and we shall have them. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thanks, uh, Ted, for letting your precious wife uh, have the phone. And um, you, you, are, you are a team and continue working together as a team. Believe in God as a team. Nothing is impossible for God. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ted. You're welcome. Thank you. All right now. All right. Okay, let's go back to cats. Cats, we're praying for for the situation you uh uh share with me in your email today. We're believing God to to bless the family of your friends and um you continue to stand in the gap. And ladies and gentlemen, uh cats is a prayer warrior. She's an intercessor. She keeps people praying for other people. And so I want you to right now, before we go even into our lesson, I want everybody to touch and agree as we lift up cats and all of the intercessors. Intercessors need prayer too, okay? So we're going to do this for cats and the intercessors. Ask God to strengthen them and keep them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for intercessors. We thank you for those who have volunteered to intercede, to 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 call on you night and day. Uh, 
24-7 around the clock as they uh, lay down their lives before you on behalf of other people, people who are hurting, people with all kinds of uh, problems and challenges. And Lord, we ask that you strengthen cats and the intercessors and every intercessor, Lord God. And we thank you. And while we're praying, we lift up Paul Begley and uh, Pastor Mark Wolverton who are in India uh, and conducting a crusade in India. We pray for you, you to cover them, Lord. Bless their host. Bless the people in India. Work mighty works, Lord God. We lift up Heidi. We lift up this entire ministry. All the people associated with the Paul Begley ministry. And we give you the praise, Lord God. And we give you the glory and the honor. Then, Lord, we pray for all who are online tonight. Those who will uh, listen to this lesson via the video or the audio. We pray that you'll bless each one and their families and meet every need they have. And we thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, Sister Jackie has, uh, my precious wife, she has the chat window. So if you have any questions, any comments, she'll be commun communicating with you there. Okay, it's week 11, ladies and gentlemen. Week 11. Out of 12, Megan, we're almost there. Christy, we're almost there. My friends, we're always almost there. Praise God. Roger Pond, we're almost there. Um, um, ben Becker, we're almost there. Ben cannot be on uh, tonight. Uh, he's working uh, on a special job assignment. But Ben, we love you. And uh, as you listen to the tape, we're praying for you, and you continue doing what you're doing. We thank God for all of you. I want to thank God for each of you, how you support one another. That's camaraderie. That's koinonia. That's called fellowship, koinonia. When one is uh, uh, challenged, we rush to that person through prayer. We trust God, the Holy Spirit, that if one is wounded, the Holy Spirit will be there to pick them up, build them up, and we love one another. We walk together in love, and and we thank God, okay? Now, before we go into our summary of our lesson for this week, I want to encourage you all to enroll in the next course. I'm available. Uh, Jackie's available. We can help guide you. Uh, what our, our vision is, is that each of you uh, stick with the school and take it one course at a time. Already, you're finishing this course, this first course, which is so critical to the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And once this course is over and you get the next course, we're recommending the next course to be understanding the Bible, understanding the Bible. I wrote the course and the textbook. It is a marvelous course, not because I wrote it, but because of what people are saying and, and how this course is changing people's lives, giving them a comprehensive look at the entire Bible in just 12 weeks. Um, this course is designed to encourage you. It will bless you. If, if you choose not to take this course and you want an, uh, a lighter course with a lesser course load, for the summer, then I recommend uh, the course um, Gifted to Succeed or um, Experiencing God in the Small Group. Each of those these courses is four credits, and you'll be four credits toward an associate's degree. The associate's degree is not so far away. Those of you who decide to stick with the school this time next year, you're ready to receive. You're almost ready to receive your associate's degree. And then what I'd like to do, once you finish the next course, I will help uh, counsel you and guide you. Jackie will also in, in your course path, in your curriculum path, whatever curriculum path you choose. I would like to see all of you take the course Gifted to Succeed, to see your strengths, see your spiritual strengths, and see uh, the evaluations in the battery of tests that you will take. These are just... Uh, uh, like a battery of test of strength to test you in your spiritual strengths where it's not uh, 
examinations or midterm exams or final exams. I mean, this is good, easy stuff. And then um, I'll be glad to work with you, um, Megan, Christy, Ted, all of you, as you take it one course at a time. I would be glad to work with you as the dean and help steer you into a path uh, that will be compatible with your area of calling. But before long, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Paul Bakerly School of Prophecy is going to grow, and 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 you all will will, uh, will be in good standing to be in that first graduating class uh, sometime next year. So you pray about it and seek the Lord. By the way, if finances, money is a problem, um, you talk with Heidi. Heidi will um, set you on a, a payment plan. So don't be uh, intimidated by finances. Uh, sign up for the courses and we will work with you. Um, I don't handle any finances, but I know how to talk to Heidi and Paul and, um, and we know how to encourage one another. So we want you to get the best that you can out of this and not stress about it. Okay, so seek the Lord. And if God wants you in these courses, he will make a way. God will make a way. He's brought you this far. Um, I believe everybody I'm talking to, your life has changed somewhat, uh, many uh, tremendously as a result of this course. I know that my life has changed. I took this course last year, and the courses that we're teaching, I'm going before you and, and, and taking these courses. I took the course um, Gifted to Succeed and Experiencing God in the Small Group. Um, I wrote the course Understanding the Bible, and so... Uh, and the next course after understanding the Bible is a course we recommend for you for September, the October session, and that's Introduction to the Prophetic. When you get under your belt, communion with God, understanding the Bible, and uh, Introduction to the Prophetic, you are well on your way. Those three courses just add two more and you have your associate's degree uh, and then we can work towards a bachelor's degree with 20 credits beyond the associates and then a master's degree ladies and gentlemen 20 credits beyond the uh, bachelor's and a doctorate uh, don't think that you can't get a doctorate degree 20 credits beyond the master's and so um, Katz is asking when does gifted to succeed start all of these courses start on June 3rd. You can take two courses if you want to. If you do decide to take two courses, I, I recommend two easier courses, Gifted to Succeed and Experiencing God in the Small Group. If you take Introduction to the Prophetic, that's a, a pretty heavy course. I, I would wait until September for that. But my recommendation for all of you, since Jackie and I have been working with you, is... Uh, that you enroll in the course Understanding the Bible, 12 weeks. In 12 weeks, you'll know more about the Bible than most pastors in the United States, I guarantee you. In just 12 weeks, ladies and gentlemen, it is an amazing course. And so you pray about it and uh, feel free to communicate with me. Call me, e email me. We can work uh, together. I'd like to work with you one-on-one -on -one in designing your curriculum uh, for the degrees. By the way, once you finish the associate degree and you want to work towards a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate, we will tailor uh, a, a, a curriculum for you. We will put you, put you in a, a, a bachelor's degree slot and we will take into consideration previous college experience that you have and life experience. So um, where I say you have, you may, you, you go 20 credits beyond the associate for the bachelor's, you won't have to do that. You'll get partial credit for what, what you've already done in, in previous college courses on, and life experience. So we'll work with you, but in the meantime, let's stay focused. Take one course at a time. We'd like you to get, stay in the track, get the associate's degree. Then we will work with you and tailor your next degrees and include, um, give you credit for life experiences and uh, 
for for the wonderful things you've done in your life and and also give you credit for previous college courses so this this whole school is designed that you get the maximum um, from what what we have to offer and we give praise and glory and honor to God for giving Pastor Paul the vision for having a school and um, I thank God for uh, choosing me to be the dean of the school I, I told Pastor Paul I'll work for a few years get him started and get the school started and then we'll see um, raise up another dean and then we'll see what happens after that but that's a few years down the line I, I intend to stay stay with it for a while praise God any questions anybody have any questions before we go any further Okay, then if you do have any questions. Yeah, Dr. Carter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, uh, if, if we've already uh, paid for the next course, um, when, about when can we expect the books to come in before, um, for, uh, for the next course? Very good. Very good, Roy. Okay, today is um, May 10. Um, two weeks from today is May 24th. We will we will um, hold off ordering the textbooks to about uh, May 26, which gives our supplier uh, adequate time to send the books out to you. Okay, now your next textbook, if you sign up for Understanding the Bible, I have your books to you uh, since those those textbooks are here. I will have those books shipped out to you in about three three days from the time we we cut off so if we say by May 26 um, if you sign up by May 26 then the following week you will have your textbooks if you sign up for understanding the Bible if you sign up for other courses uh, I would like you to have give us a, a week a window of a week a week's time uh, from approximately May 26 until June 3rd and during that week's time uh, our supplier is the Christian Leadership University online Dr. Mark Verkler and uh, we have Dr. Mark's people mailing out the textbooks for let's say if you're taking um, if you're taking introduction to the prophetic or if you're taking uh, experiencing God in the in the small group or the course gifted to succeed did I answer you, Roy? Thank you very much. Okay, okay. You will have you will have um, your textbooks on time to begin, and um, our starting date for the next semester is June third, and we will go from June third to June to August thirty first. So you'll have your textbooks in time, and. Um, if you're if you're with the understanding the Bible course I'll be teaching that course we will have an online course once a week for 12 weeks for understanding the Bible and for those who are taking introduction to the prophetic um, that course will be online also once a week we will not have a once a week online for gifted to succeed or experiencing God in the small group but what I would do if you're going to take gifted to God uh, gifted to succeed or experiencing God in the small group I will have like a four-hour seminar a four-hour seminar Roy and and students on each of those courses and I'll make those seminars available like live like on a Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning uh, for four hours or else if you cannot come on live then you can access I will I will do that in segments of two audios and you can access these online so with the courses gifted to succeed and experiencing God in the small group there will not be a weekly online course in lieu of that we will have a four hour Saturday seminar one Saturday in the 12 week period one Saturday four hours I will teach for two hours give you a lunch break as you come back for two more hours uh, for those who cannot do that then I will teach anyhow 
do this do the segments online and make them available um, in the archive uh, website or on YouTube so we'll work that out for you but those who are taking understanding the Bible yes I'm, I'm looking forward to teaching that course and meeting with you we will meet on Wednesdays next semester for understanding the Bible for those who are taking introduction to the prophetic we will meet on Thursdays and um, we're looking forward to that any other questions Is it going to be the same time? Um, it's four for me when we start, four to six. Yes, Megan, uh, except for the courses Gifted to Succeed and Experiencing God in the Small Group, we're looking at relatively the same time. For the Saturday seminars, uh, probably we're look looking at 8 o'clock a.m. your time. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. But we'll Thank work you. out something with you and for you. Well, that's fine. Weekends are great for me. Thank you. Good, good, good. Any other questions? Now, that's that sounds like a deal, you know, taking Gifted to Succeed. Uh, you're working on your own and one seminar, a weekend seminar. Uh, so that saves you a lot of your own time. Uh, same with experiencing God in the small group. You're working on your own. Each of those courses is, is self-starting and self-guiding, and um, you can do this. But also, in every course that you take, keep in mind, whether you're taking it with an online uh, weekly class or a weekend seminar, you've got us here to help you. Okay, You have me, you have Jackie, and then you have, starting next semester, uh, uh, Pastor Mark Wolverton, who's coming on as one of our instructors. Okay, any other questions? You're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, tonight what I'd like to do is uh, let's turn to page 17 of your student binder, page 17 in your communion with God binder, and look at, let's look at the requirements for lesson 11. Many of you have already completed Lesson 11 and uh, have turned those lessons in. And so all you have to do, if you have completed Lesson 11, <coughs> and ladies and gentlemen, once you complete Lesson 11, the only requirement you have left in this course is to come online with me next week while I talk, I'm going to talk more about the school. Hopefully we have Pastor Paul back from India. Um, and he can uh, address you or Sister Heidi, and then um, and they will, they'll congratulate you on succeeding the course. And then your only assignment based on next week's class is a two-page or a three-page summary report. I will give you the incidentals of that summary report next week, but it's actually a summarization of the course. What were the strengths of the course? What are the weaknesses of the course? How did this course impact you? What are your recommendations uh, for future students who will take this course? A two-page sum summary. And, and then you have your first four credits under your belt, and you're well on your way in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. Somebody, uh, somebody ought to put hallelujah in the chat window. Thank you. Okay, on page 17, your assignment um, for lesson seven, number, a, number one, one A, write out 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse five. I love uh, 2 Corinthians 10, three to five, which says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Um, but the spirit of the but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds then verse 4 verse 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought obedient to Christ Jesus that fifth, fifth verse says we can cast down vain imaginations and and uh, I was practicing a little bit of journaling so let me journal let me let me imagine I'm journaling okay and I'm going to give you 
how I would journal this. Praise God. You get, you're going to get a hands-on experience. I'm not going to write anything, but I'm going to speak out my journaling. Okay. I would, as, as a student, as, 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 as a prayer warrior, as a petitioner of God, I would say, Lord God, what would you like to say to me about this verse? Casting down all vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought obedient to Christ Jesus. Then, uh, Christy, I would quiet myself before the Lord. And I would wait. I'm going to do like Habakkuk, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to wait until I hear God's voice. And at some point, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to stop talking. Because if I'm talking, I can't hear God's voice. But I'm just talking you through how I'm going to journal this for you tonight. Okay? So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just come to you and and. And I present to you this, this passage of scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Father God, what does this mean? What are you trying to say to me through this verse? My son, here's what I'm saying to you, that everything you hear is not the truth. And that no matter who's saying it, you've got to test the spirit by the spirit. And when you hear something that is contrary to my word and is not my voice, you will know it's not my voice because you're learning to hear my voice. And therefore, any thought that comes in your mind or you see on the screen of your mind, or any thought you hear, no matter who it's coming from, you can, if it is not of me, you can cast it down. You do not have to receive this thought, my son. You do not have to receive any thoughts. You cast them down. Well, God, how do I cast them down? By not receiving them and rebuking them, you can speak to that thought and say, thought, I do not receive you. In the name of Jesus, I bind you. I command that you leave me. I refuse to accept you. That's how you cast it down. But do not operate on it. Do not receive any thought that is not of me. When you know it's the enemy or you know it's your own voice or you know it's someone else, if it is not of me and if not, and it's not, if it's not in agreement with my word, you cast it down. And then you bring into captivity every thought, every, every thought in your mind. You take it as a captive and present it before me. And if it is not of me, I will reveal it to you. And then you can capture those thoughts and cast them out of your mind. I want you to have a pure mind and a pure heart when you come to me. And the things that I, 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 I want you to hear, I want you to receive them purely. That's an example, ladies and gentlemen, of, of what I would. And then I would take those things. I would pause and I would write those things down. And, and I say, okay, God has spoken to me. And I know I said uh, there were a lot of words that the Lord said to me in re in in relating to that particular uh, passage of Scripture, and we didn't even get far enough to hear the the part about bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. But this whole thing is capturing those thoughts you hear in your mind. And do something with them. You do not have to receive them. They do not have to maintain a place in your mind because if they're in your mind, they're going to be in your heart. So you, you, you tell the Satan, I rebuke you. I rebuke those thoughts. Those thoughts are not of God. And then what I would do, ladies and gentlemen, if I don't write word for word what God says to me, I'm going to write a summary. And then I'll. After I finish writing and journaling what God has said to me, then I will reread it and, and think about it. Then, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions about what God spoke to you, well, God, what do you mean? Uh, 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 if those thoughts are, are 
my own thoughts and, and they're incompatible with the scripture. What what do you mean? And, and then you go back to God, ladies and gentlemen, and ask him for clarity. And God is patient. He will give you clarity. And 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 he he's not a God of confusion. And so that's just a sample. And that's that's how I do it. And that's how I would respond to the Lord. I would present the, the situation to God. For example, if there's a question, well, God, uh, uh, what shall I do about uh, exercising? Should I should I do more daily exercising? What shall I do? And then I go to God and and wait on Him, and He'll tell me what to do. Then I write down whatever the challenge is, whatever the question is. This course, this course is designed, ladies and gentlemen, to teach us how to approach God by using two methods, one of two methods. We can approach him the way Habakkuk approached him, by asking direct questions and waiting, positioning yourself. And you've got to actually position yourself. God, I'm going to quiet myself down right now, and I'm not going to say another word. I want you to speak. I honor you, and I permit you, and I allow you to speak. Because a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, we don't honor God or give him permission. We're, you know me, I'm talkative. I'm just talking. I'm talking when God wants to talk. So there comes a place where I have to say, Lord, I'm going to quiet myself down. And then if there are thoughts in me that are negative and I've, I've, and, I, and, and I've got sinful thoughts, I've got to cast down all those vain imaginations or anything that's trying to disrupt my communion with God. I've got to cast it down take authority over it god has given us authority whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and then the scripture says let this mind be in you that was in christ jesus and so lord i receive the mind of christ jesus now lord let's communicate i have the mind of christ and i only want to hear what you have to say to me i'm not going to entertain any other thoughts and then ladies and gentlemen you've got to be bold enough in your journaling experience in your questioning god you've got to tell the devil the devil the lord rebuke you i cast down that imagination that's a vain imagination that is not of god i bind it in the name of jesus i command it to leave me though that's the power god has given to you okay and then write down you may not get word for word what the Lord is saying and uh, you may get a few words from him and then he will give you clarity as you reread it and then you write it rewrite it so I hope that helps somebody that's the Habakkuk way of doing things the other way of of journaling is do to do the tabernacle experience in your prayer Lord I want to talk to you I want to come into the holy of holies but before I enter the holy, holy of holies, I want to enter into your gates with thanksgiving. And I stop at the altar, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I surrender my will to you. And, and, and I present my body as a living sacrifice. And then, Lord, wash me in the pure water of your word. See, I'm working my way to the holy of holies, ladies and gentlemen. And then, Lord, I partake of the showbread, the bread of life. You are the bread of life. You said man shall not live by bread alone. So I feast on your word. And then, Holy Spirit, illumine my mind. Then, then I'm at the uh, altar of in, uh, altar of um, the I'm at the candlesticks. Okay. Then I go to the altar of incense. Now, Lord, let my praise and my prayers and my worship enter into your nostrils as a sweet smelling fragrance i repent of my sins i confess my sins and now lord and now you're ready to enter into the holy of holies you 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 you're ready to go to that last piece of furniture the ark of the covenant but you've got to go through the holy of holies lord i've confessed my sins i've repented uh I, I, I'm coming to you with a clean heart. I've cast it down all vain imaginations. Now, Lord, uh, permit me to enter into the Holy of Holies, and, and I, I, I want to commune with you. And you'll hear God's voice. God will say, come in. I receive you. I'm waiting for you. Come in. And then I will sit quietly before the Lord, and then uh, God may want to speak first. And if he speaks first, receive what he speaks. Uh, write down what he says. And then, Lord, I want to ask you about 2 
Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, which says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against knowledge of God and bring into obedience every thought captive to Jesus Christ. What shall I do about this verse? What do you want to say to me about this verse? These, these are, I've just outlined to you two ways, ladies and gentlemen, in which we can approach God and practice. You can practice both ways. Uh, you can practice one or two. And what you've learned in this course is how to approach God and how to discern his voice. He said, my sheep know my voice. And, 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 uh, and how to test the voice you hear with the scripture. And so this is what uh, we've been learning in this course. Okay, time out. Any questions? I hope that helps somebody. I just felt led to review this whole thing about journaling and asking God so that you're not afraid to enter into God's presence with any questions that are on your mind because he made you and he has the answers. I'd rather you go to God than to go to uh, the witch doctor or the lady sitting behind the crystal ball or roll the dice. Can I get a witness from somebody? Megan says I mean, amen. Okay. Megan, did that explanation help you any with how the journal, how to approach God? It did. Um, I still have problems with stillness, but um it does it does help and I, I kind of feel like there's so much more to learn before this course ends. But um but thank you. Praise God. Megan, the beautiful thing and, and this will help your classmates also, once this course ends you can go back and god bless you cats we're praying for you and your family you can go back once this course ends and review and review and review and then add on build upon build upon what you've learned in this course so this course megan is like a foundation that you're going to keep on building on in your relationship with god and in your communion with him any other questions? Amen. Okay. I just want to spend a little bit of time on journaling because we've spent so much time with journaling during this course that I want you to uh, feel confident in what you're doing. And um, everyone does not journal the same way. Uh, some of you may get a whole lot of words, a lot of verbal our words from the Lord where others may not some will get pictures some will get illustrations uh, some who are more right brain than left brain will get see patterns and visions and and pictures but God will answer you so don't be afraid to go to him him he is our Heavenly Father and he made us to commune with him he made us to come to him with questions and to seek him for the answers Okay, number two, the subjects of submission and authority have been explored several times during this course. Discuss your theology concerning the biblical principle of authority and how it relates to hearing God's voice. Support your position with scripture. You don't have to write a whole lot about this, but ladies and gentlemen, you can use the illustration of the um, soldier who was under authority. He came to Jesus, asked Jesus to... I'll heal his servant and and he told Jesus I am a man set under authority and I know that if I ask you all you have to do is speak a word and my servant will be healed then uh, Jesus had told him that the servant was already healed because Jesus said I've never seen this much faith before okay so authority uh, what is your concept of authority uh, the Bible teaches us about authority. We're to be set under authority. Honor your father and your mother. If you do not honor your father and your mother, God's not going to bless you. Uh, and that goes for everybody. The, God has set us under authority. And uh, husbands, obey. Husbands, uh, love your wives as 
as Christ loved the church, when a husband abuses his wife, he's not going to get blessed. I don't care if he's the pastor, if he's the bishop. Wives, be submissive to your own husbands. So this whole thing about authority uh, comes into that second question. And submission means being open to the spirit-led counsel and correction of several others. Uh, are you open? I pray that you'll stay open. I pray that I will stay open to the spirit-led counsel uh, and correction of others. That is why earlier in this course you were asked to choose two or three spiritual advisors. And even if you don't have two or three, if you have one, if you have two, be open to their spirit-led counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes if your spiritual advisors give you advice that is not of God, then this is called vain imagine, vain imaginations. And then you've got to cast it down. And you've got to bring into captivity that thought that your spiritual advisor gave you. And you've got to test it with the spirit to see whether it's of God. And if it's not of God, then you need to get you another spiritual advisor. Amen. Praise God. So submission is being open to the spirit-led counsel and correction of your spiritual advisors. Um, and if, if they are not correcting you or counseling you uh, spiritually, according to the scripture, then you do not have to submit to that. You do not have to submit to that. Well, what about the government? Are we to submit to our government? The Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. There are things we are to obey, even though we don't want to, but we are not to submit to anything that's ungodly, ladies and gentlemen. Anything that's anti-Christ, anything that's ungodly, we are not to submit to it. And no matter, no matter what it is, we're not to submit. Any questions on question number two? We're on page 17 of your manual. Question three, ask the Lord through journaling if there is anyone you have not completely forgiven for everything. Allow him to show you the situation from his perspective and draw upon his grace to forgive. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if there's somebody in your life or in your past you've not forgiven and you keep remembering that situation or they've hurt you and... Uh, 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 you, you don't feel like you've been satisfied concerning that situation. Forgive. Be quick to forgive. The scripture says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And I know you could argue with me and I could argue with others. Well, you don't know what they did to me. No, but look at what they did to Jesus on the cross. He was without sin and they killed him. But yet he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And it's because of his asking the Father to forgive not only his, the perpetrators, the killers, but all of us who've come into existence after his crucifixion. He asked God to forgive, to forgive everyone. And we're to be like Christ. No matter what they do to us, no matter how hard, how severe it is, we are to forgive. And it's not easy, but the easiest thing to do is to forgive. Forgive. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And don't seek revenge or vengeance. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Okay? The next question, question four, ask the Lord through journaling if there are any issues that you're not approaching with the fervent wholeheartedness that is necessary to bring about his purposes and if there are how he wants you to pray about them uh, there may be some challenges God has put in your life and you're not too excited about them and you're not going at, after them fer fervently talk to God about them and ask God how to best to accomplish his will six discuss the roles of father son holy spirit and you as a believer in prayer Ask the Lord through journaling how he wants you to work out this truth in your prayer life. What, what is the role of the Father when you pray? What is the role of the Holy Spirit when you pray? What is the role of Jesus when you pray? 
You know, Jesus sits on the right hand of the throne of God and he makes intercession for us all the day long. What is the role of the Holy Spirit when you pray? The Holy Spirit guides us into prayer. He uses our voice when we submit to him and he prays unto God. He may pray in your English or your Spanish or whatever language you speak, or he may pray in the gift of tongues as you offer your voice unto him and pray in your prayer language. And the Holy Spirit takes uh, that's why I love praying in tongues. When I pray in tongues, I know that Satan cannot hinder these prayers and the Holy Spirit takes these prayers uh, in your prayer language directly to the throne of God and your prayers become, and my prayers become a sweet smelling fragrance in the nostrils of God. Uh, our prayers are sweeter than the honeysuckle that Jackie and I experience uh, the fragrance of honeysuckle as we did our morning walk today. Our prayers are sweeter than honeysuckle in God's nostrils, whether you're praying in English or whether you're praying in, in tongues. It, the point is to pray in sincerity, trusting God the Father to hear you, trusting the Holy Spirit to help you to pray and to carry your prayers unto God, and trusting Jesus who is interceding interceding and and as jesus is interceding for us in prayer we're in agreement the two of us are touching and agreeing upon anything we ask god uh in faith believing jesus is interceding with us the holy spirit is helping us he comes alongside to help us and he prays for us and through us and god the father hears and he grants and just wait on the lord and trust him and when you pray seeing this scenario you will have great success okay number seven begin meditating on appendix c of four keys to hearing god's voice working definitions concerning spiritual realities read slowly um if that's a whole lot of questions just do uh, a few just make that very brief okay so that's lesson 11 that's your assignment um for this week some of you have already completed this assignment and um there will be no audio tape tonight praise god no audio tape tonight i have two minutes to eight on my clock here and uh there'll be no audio uh you're finished with the audios but i just wanted to review this week's assignment and to encourage you, uh, we've been working together for 11 weeks, and it's a blessing. One more week, and your assignment is short. Be feel feel free to to uh, critique this course. How can we help strengthen this course for others? I know if I were a student critiquing this course, I'd say there are too many textbooks. There's too much homework. Yes, that is true. This course is the most demanding of all the courses in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. The next most demanding course is the course Introduction to the Prophetic. Introduction to the Prophetic has almost as much work in it as you're doing in this one. My course Understanding the Bible will be challenging, but uh, 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 you won't be breaking out in cold sweats while you're, while you're doing your homework, okay? Um, so after you finish introduction to the bible i mean understanding the bible and introduction to the prophetic uh it gets a little bit easier as you go along and um you'll enjoy you'll enjoy the path that you're on okay jack is there anything that i need to attend to nothing that comes to mind at the minute Okay. Uh, just remind those who um, are still working on their assignments to not get discouraged um, if you're not where you think you should be at this point, but just um, be diligent and uh, continue to work on them. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are behind and don't complete all of your lessons by uh, the end of May, 
you you have we we'll give you a couple weeks to get them all together we just don't want you to ha be going into your next class having incomplete assignments in this course and they're new assignments so do the best you can to complete these courses these assignments on time and um, if anybody's having any difficulty please give me a call or uh, send me an email okay any questions from anyone Ben uh, yeah, Dr. Miss you tonight Ben and, and uh, hope this audio will help you yes who is speaking this is Roy right mm -hmm. hey on uh, question number three of lesson 11 um, it's asking about um, journaling um, if you have not completely forgiven yes can I just hear what your idea is of complete forgiveness if that's okay with you complete forgiveness okay Roy complete forgiveness means uh, whenever you think of your cousin Joe you get angry okay because Joe uh, stole your girl back in 1980 <laughs> I hope your wife's not listening okay Joe your cousin Joe stole your girl stole your car and your credit cards and he took your girlfriend to California and every time you think of him you get angry okay you, uh, you get that tight feeling on the inside so that means you haven't completely forgiven your cousin Joe uh, or 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 Roy there are certain people you think about them and, and if you see them uh, um, you'd like to just grab your baseball bat and knock some sense in them you ever had that feeling Roy <laughs> no, not recently no <laughs> hey Roy Roy you're saying well, Pastor Carter you think those things Roy Roy there are times man there are times <laughs> 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 ladies and gentlemen let's be honest with one another there are times that there are people who come into your life and they get on your last nerve huh and there are some people when you see them coming into even in the church when you see them coming in you know they're trouble and if you've ever been a pastor ladies and gentlemen if you've ever been a pastor or a leader in the church there are people in the church uh, even if you haven't seen them for years you remember how they aggra aggravated you. That means, Roy, you haven't completely forgiven them. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, uh. Roy, hey, ladies and gentlemen, you know what Roy's thinking right now? Man, we gotta, we gotta get up to uh, Life on the Georgia. We gotta lay hands on Pastor Carter, man, because he got some issues. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was thinking it's gonna take me a long time to complete number three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Roy. I'm just Roy, kidding. I'm just kidding. Roy, Roy, that's being honest, okay? And, and and we've got and we've got to be honest with God, okay? Well, God, I'm looking at this question number three, and you know, you you know, uh, uh, um, I was hurt back then, and I and and they did me wrong, or they fired me off my job, or they foreclosed on my home, and I was struggling trying to pay pay my bills. And and some of those things still kind of bubble up in us. No, they they slam us, and 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 we get kind of bent out of shape. And uh, it's the testing of our faith, Roy. You still forgive them, God. I forgive. Now and and also, Roy. I, there are times I say, Lord, now where did that thought come from? I thought I had gotten over that. Well, I repent and I forgive them. And so. As as the Holy Spirit brings those things to your your remembrance, just repent, forgive, and and let it go. And it's a process, Roy. It's a process sometimes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You think you're over something, and you realize you're not over over it at all. Uh, I think everybody has these experiences, but we're not making excuses. Just forgive. And ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to forgive. Come alongside me. You're my partner, Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't even want to be around this person. 
I don't even want to see that person. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'd react if I saw this person. And just ask for forgiveness. Patricia says, I have to meditate on Ephesians. What's that uh, again, Patricia? She says she has to meditate on Ephesians. So, uh, Ephesians, yeah. Ephesians 6, uh, chap, uh, verse 11 and 12. It's like, our, our war, our, um, war is not against flesh, but against the, um, the darkness and principalities. Of yes, the yes. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, no. powers, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness, and heavenly places. And Roy and Patricia and class, Satan knows who to pop up in your mind or what situation yeah. or what circumstance that you thought you were over, he knows when to bring that before you. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 is so important. You cast down those vain imaginations. You say, oh, no, devil, you're a liar. I repented of that, and I've yeah. been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. That thought has been cast into the sea of, uh, of, of, of forgetfulness. And, and you tell the devil, devil, you're not going to use that against me because God has forgiven that and I don't have any malice in my heart. And if you do have any, any a twinkling of anger, God forgive me, I repent. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that's been brought up because cause I, 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 I need to repent again, uh, from that and cleanse me. So Roy, there are many ways that we can handle. And um, thanks Roy for sharing with us and Patricia, because iron sharpens iron, I think in this subject, every one of us needs help. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, let's hear from some of those quiet ones out there. Give me a minute with Shelly. Hi, Dr. Carter. Hi, Shelly. Has this class helped you tonight? Yes. It, it really has. Well, the whole the whole class has helped. Us. Praise God. Praise Eleven God. weeks. Praise yeah. God. But Shelly yeah. saying, Shelly saying, y'all, she saying, but Pastor Carter, you're not gonna get any confession out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shelly, I understand. Okay, hey, love you, Shelly. Love you all. Praise God. Thank you. All right, everybody. Um, Let's ask Jackie to lead us in prayer, and then we're going to close out. It's been a joy sharing with you all tonight, and uh, thank God for this opportunity to present this information to you. We give God the glory, honor, and praise. Uh, Jackie, would you lead us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of your blessings. We thank you for each of our students, and we ask that you bless them and that you continue to encourage them and that you bless their families, because oftentimes when we undertake new um, adventures or undertakings, we, we forget that our families are also impacted. So we ask that you bless their families as well. We ask a special blessing upon Pastor Paul and Brother Mark as they minister in India. We ask that you keep them safe, Lord, but that you use them to let your word go forth. We ask that you bless and guide Sister Heidi as she continues to try to keep the ministry going from the state side. And Lord, we just lift up uh, Drake and all of uh, the other prayer requests, those who have been voiced and those, Lord, who were not shared but are on the hearts of our students. And we ask that you just continue to work in each one, Lord Jesus, so that your majesty will be manifested in each and every one of them as they grow. And we ask now, Lord, that you just be with us as we end tonight's session, but not our camaraderie and our love for each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Good night, everybody. We love you.